Welcome to Matrix Mapping video. In this short video, I will show you how to navigate the map without using area numbers and show you some tools that are on the map that will help you. I'm already logged into Matrix and I am on the Matrix home page. I will begin with search residential because that's the most common search. My defaults are active, coming soon, and under contract. FYI, you can change those by using this settings gear. And I'm going to change it to active and coming soon. And that means the next time I go into a search, when I get the little yellow indicator up here, that I have changed my criteria. Now, at the time of this recording, there are hardly any listings in the MLS. So when I just search for single family active and coming soon, I'm under 2300. Now, the first method for using the map is on your home page map search. You can come within a predetermined distance from a location. So I'll select three miles from our newest location, Allegiant Stadium. And it will ask me if that's what I meant, and I believe, I believe that's the place. So within three miles of the stadium, I have found 32 matches. While you're searching, keep your eyes on the lower left-hand side of your screen. Now, what does that look like on the map? I'm going to come to the map in the upper right-hand corner. And basically what happened was I got a radius around the stadium. There we go. So within three miles, these 32 listings are shown on the map. Now I may zoom into the map using the plus sign or using my scroll wheel between my right and left mouse buttons. Now I can delete this shape by clicking on the red dot in the center of the shape. That's one thing I can do. Across the top, I have one of these icons is clear all shapes. But these are the properties that are within three miles of Allegiant Stadium. Now as I hover, on the property. It'll tell me the price, bedrooms, bathrooms, and the address. If I click on it, it will allow me to select that property. And quite a few agents do select from the map rather than the results display. If I want to go directly to this listing, I can click on the ML number. Now I said active and coming soon, and I don't have any coming soon on here. These are all active. And I can erase this by clearing all shapes. I could go back to my criteria and hit the clear button down at the bottom, clearing my entire search. Another way to use the map, from the upper right, middle, or lower left, click on map. Now the message, too many results, will show. The coming soon are a dark color, dark black, purple, navy blue. But as I zoom out, I will get bullseyes to indicate approximately how many properties in each of these areas meet the criteria, which is single family, active or coming soon. So as I get closer into the neighborhoods, the bullseyes go away and the green for active and the dark for coming soon. So if I want to, again, I can select these directly from the map. But what we'll do is use these tools across the top. Now the first thing before we use these tools, a lot of agents believe that this map is too busy to draw a shape. The green gets in their way. Until you're proficient at using the map, you can hide the properties. It's a two part tip. Part number one, criteria. Put a zero in the MLS number. 
And part number two will come later, but that will clear the map for you so that you have a nice clean map to draw shapes. Now for the shapes. Radius, when I select it, it turns an orange color, and then I can draw a circle on my map. And it tells me how far out I'm going as I move it out. I can overlap shapes if I want to. Not only can I overlap shapes, but I can ask for only the intersection of this shape to be used. That's a little bit of advanced mapping. I have yet to use that you know, include the intersection only. Nice concept, but there hasn't been a place for me to use it yet. If you, I'm gonna erase that and then the rectangle turns to a crosshair and you pull your rectangle out. And you can draw multiple shapes. I believe you can draw up to five shapes and erase them. And this is a skill, it's like riding a bicycle. The more you do it, the better you get. Now the polygon is one that may be familiar to some that were around in 2005 in ML Exchange. It's a way to draw an odd shape, straight lines, but what was so challenging about it, and I taught hands-on classes back then, is in order to end your polygon, you had to know where you started. And if you didn't end your polygon, you ended up taking it with you as you went to California. I watched people do that over and over again in some of the hands-on classes. But the most agreeable shape is the freehand polygon so that I can, and that's supposed to be a heart, and I can draw multiple freehand polygons. Now, question for you, why aren't there any properties on the map? Part two of the tip I just gave you is to erase the ML number. And once you do that and go back to the map, you will get the number of properties that match this criteria. 48 matches within both of those heart shapes. So I will clear the shape. Let me go back and do the zero again, just to clean up the map as I show you the layers. Now the layers help you navigate around. Now I'm looking at layers right now and I see a red zoom in and I see zip code is red. So that tells me as I zoom in, zip will show. So that will give me a breakdown of the valley in a zip code format. So that's one way of looking at Las Vegas. Another way, and you can do more than one zip at a time, is to do the city boundaries. And this will let you discern North Las Vegas from Las Vegas. The boundaries are light green, doing two boundaries at once. So on my mat, each time I add a layer, it gets a little bit busier. And the way the cities come to us from the county and from Google, Spring Valley, Paradise, Winchester, Whitney, Enterprise, all of those mean Las Vegas. So this green line is also helpful because coming down to Henderson, you're in Las Vegas, then you're in Henderson, then you're in Las Vegas. So there's a little bit of jagged edges here for Henderson. So that is another layer. But the one you might be looking for is your beloved area numbers. Now in the area numbers, they're in red and they tell you in red what area number that they are. And one of the things about area numbers, because they stopped being assigned many, many, many years ago. I can't even count how many years ago we assigned an area number. We ended at 215. So these properties that are north of 215, 
what area were they ending up being? 102, 103? What were they ending up being? So agents enter area numbers now, and the new agents ask us, why are we still using them? And the answer is because a lot of folks need to change the way they're drawing on the map. They need to begin drawing on the map rather than using the subdivision name or the area number. Uncheck MLS area. One you might like is the neighborhood. Now let me take away zip because neighborhood is busy. Purple are neighborhoods. You know, and some of them are pretty tiny and some of them are wide open. It really depends upon what part of town. And these are brought to you by Google, not by a realtor made up map. These maps were already made by Google and these neighborhoods were already there. So I'm gonna zoom into a neighborhood that I would like to search. McNeil. And McNeil appears to be a rectangle. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle. Now there's a little area over here I can draw another rectangle right next to it. I don't know if there are any properties there, but two rectangles allows me to draw the shape of McNeil. Now, one more tool before we leave is this jump to address. If you've ever attended my CMA class, this is where you can plug in an address or jump to a particular part of Las Vegas or Pahrump. Now, again, I've drawn a shape around McNeil. How come I don't have any matches? The two-part help is I remove the ML number, come back to the map, and I have six matches. So I can choose to select them by clicking on the map, the green indicator, or I can go to my results and select them there. But while we're here, there's a feature of the map some of you may have found, walk the block. Well, basically what that means is that you can click on any parcel number and find out if it was ever in MLS. Now here's one that was in MLS back in 2019, but it was leased after that. So you can get to possibly the rental listing or you can always get to a public record. So any property you click on, and sometimes they might not even be in MLS anymore. Here's one that I clicked on and it was sold back in 2005, which Back then, the prices are very close to what they are now, but I, we had a little bit of a bubble back then. And you could still see the tax records, though. But finally, you'll most likely go to results and pick your properties from results rather than doing it on the map. Any questions about the map? Call us, 735-0478. Thanks.